How's it going y'all? I figured I'd give y'all a quick update on the C5 and the FD. So, let's get to it. But yeah, apparently I know nothing about C5s, which makes sense because this is the first one I've ever driven or owned. So, but yeah. Nothing was wrong with the car at all. I just kind of freaked out because apparently it's like a common issue for these, for like the sending unit in these to like misread and it causes the light on the dash to like check gauges so that will come on. Well, as I was sitting in the drive through that happened, that light come on. So I looked down and the first gauge I see is like the temp gauge, it's like in the 200s. So I freaked out, I thought it was overheating. <laughs> yeah. Fans come on perfectly fine at the correct temperature like they're supposed to, so it was nothing was wrong with it at all. I'm just an idiot, you know? It happens. <laughs> like I said, this car is LS swapped, and like I said, the fans come on at like 180, I think. But like I said, this ECU has been messed with, so I'm assuming they adjusted the temperature when they unlocked it so I could actually, you know, make the swap run. Who knew? I didn't. <laughs> I can't remember the gentleman's name, but someone commented on the video and he nailed it right on the head. The fan temperature and the squeak is coming from the uh, the harmonic balancer, which like I said, I've already ordered one. So now probably the, like the next video that I do with this thing, um, or no, better yet, I got a cool video coming up. I'm actually going to take the C5 and the FD and have them dynoed on the very on the same day. So that'll be pretty cool. <laughs> but after that, like I said, I kind of want to get a baseline with them. But after that, I'm going to put a cam and uh, everything in the C5. So that should fix the squeak. I got a new harmonic balancer and everything. But yeah, I got rid of like that side molding and like all the like the chrome bits and all the stuff I didn't like on it and lowered it with the uh, bolts and stuff. But it looks pretty good, man. I'm pumped on it, like I said. I'll flip it around and show you how the car. But like, what a transformation. Like I said, just getting rid of like the LS1 badge and that little side molding. And like all the chrome bits. I don't too much care for the little license plate at front, but um, I can't find the cover that's supposed to be there. But yeah, I think it looks a million times better. And it's extremely, extremely low. <laughs> I wasn't expecting the car to be this low. But like the little little rings that were on the tail lights and all that stuff, so. Got the exhaust to line up somewhat. Not perfect, but good enough. I won't be running that, that cap or axle back for too much longer. I did pick up some wheels for it, but I gotta get tires. Which right now, these are 18s and 19s in the back. I would kind of like to stay with that fitment, but I don't know if 19s will be actually decent for drifting or not, but yeah. She's looking pretty good, I think, already. So. But yeah, I think it's a pretty big improvement for only having the car for a couple weeks so yeah full exhaust fully serviced so we're, we're making good progress with that thing <laughs> and the fd worst youtuber in the world i haven't recorded anything but i have been driving this car a decent amount um like not that you guys would know it but still madly in love with this car this thing has not given me any trouble at all i think the only trouble i've had out of it since i've got it together is i bent the diff mount that i had I've been through a couple of them, so. But, like I said, I have the 8.8 uh, the .8 rear end kit to go in this thing. It's just, I don't want to pull the whole rear end out, do all that work, and have to take it back out to do other things. So, I'm trying to save up the money so when I do it, it's all done and I don't have to worry about pulling the rear end out, you know, again, or at least for a very, very long time. So, but. Oh my god, I'm so in love with that car. <laughs> I love my RX-7. Like, it is insane. Like I said, the fact that I put this car together and I know where it come from, it, like I said, 
this car means a lot to me. I know y'all have already seen it, but I'll kind of let you guys see it again, but yeah. I'm just, with all the headache and everything, I'm just really pumped on this car. I'm glad I stuck it out and finished it. Yeah, you can see right there in the floor where the diff brace actually bent and caved the floor in right there. So that's a big bummer, <laughs> but I'll fix that. So I just got to get some more, uh, some more lizard skin and everything and put that down there. So, but yeah, I don't know if I showed y'all the upgraded where I've started working on the nitrous system, upgrading it, but. If you're if you're not following me on Instagram, follow me on Instagram. It's a RX7 Hunter. Um, I do a lot of stuff on there that I don't really put on YouTube, <laughs> but well, this is kind of what I was thinking with the nitrous setup. It's basically just two small nitrous systems that come in together to do a two stage. I still got to finish hooking it up, but I want to get this thing dynoed. Um, just a baseline, that way when I put a cam and stuff in, I kind of know where it's at, but. But yeah, I cannot, cannot tell you guys how, how ecstatic I am and happy to have these two cars. I feel very, very blessed to have these two things. Um, so, yeah. This one right here has proven to be a little bit of a headache. Since I've had it, um, have had some issues, just, the previous owner bought like some really cheap plug wires and uh, coil packs and I've already had some plug wires fail and coil packs but I fixed that off camera it's just stupid maintenance stuff but yeah I'm super pumped I cannot wait to kind of do some more stuff with these things like I would love to get this thing on BC's and because the suspension feels kind of clapped out you know it's it's old so the lowering bolts were just a temporary to get it to look better, so which I think it looks a million times better. Yeah, I'd like to get some BCs for this thing. Definitely gotta get some racing seats, angle kit, which will be the first angle kit I have ever had. <laughs> I'm not like really consider myself like a drifter, but I've been to like a handful of events here and there, kind of scattered out through the years. But next year I'm wanting to like really go to some events and actually get some seat time. And I'm hoping this is going to be the car, which honestly it's going to be the Z, which y'all get to see that soon. The Z is not gone, are like totally messed up, as you know I said, but it's going to make a comeback. I just turned it to a, I turned a good running car into a project, <laughs> which is the pretty much the norm for me. So, but yeah, yeah. I just want to make a quick video, so I won't ramble too much longer, but. Just kind of want to show you the, you know, the RX-7 still, still around and still in good shape. And we're going to do some stuff with it. And the uh, Corvette, you know, after getting pretty much just, now it feels like my car. You know, it doesn't feel like a car that I just bought and driving around. You know, I've done some stuff to it. It's basically where I want it to be as far as looks wise. So, yeah, it feels like my car now. But anyway, it's going to be enough of me rambling. I'll end this with some beauties and everything. And uh, we'll see you guys on the next one. Like I said, we'll do some 350Z update maybe. Or it's probably going to be these two going to the dyno. Because I really want to get them dynoed before I start doing stuff to them. So RX-7, you know, cam, that cam. So it's kind of curious. We might even do like a little roll race. So yeah, make sure y'all stick around. Dyno day with these two things. See which one makes more power. Like a roll race on the highway. That's going to be the next video. But anyway. We'll end this on some beauties of the two cars, and uh, we'll see you on the next one, guys.